Hello and welcome back to the Honest Lab Horror Show, the show that we bring to you each and every Friday night. Why do we do this on a Friday night, Ted? Tell the man why we do it on a Friday night. Because Friday night is horror night. <laughs> Absolutely, fucking lootly it is. Um, but as everybody knows that watches the show, I give a quick rundown as to why when the guests are from the States. We used to uh, have a channel, well we still have a channel called Channel 4, but it doesn't do it anymore really. At uh, 10 p.m. when the watershed ended, we used to get all the classic horror movies on free to air TV, and it was wonderful. It's where I got to see my very first ever horror movie, which was Nightmare on Elm Street, that I remember anyway. 11 or 12 years of age, sneaking down the stairs, hooked ever since. Got to see Friday the 13th, Halloween, House. House was awesome. But uh, yeah, it was it was a wonderful time growing up the late 90s early 2000s all the free ones <laughs> but uh yeah everyone everyone that kind of watches the show knows that rundown now um but tonight we are joined by a resident on the slab member uh tombstone ted how are you sir oh i'm not too bad just as always mooching around here uh you know coming in when when i'm needed and just hanging around other than that uh <laughs> annoying annoying all the other guys Let, letting you out of the doldrums for the day yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no scream fill them out, so I'm not tied up watching them. You know, I've, I've watched them all already again this year, so. Albeit, it has gone into production. That's it something. has. <laughs> yeah. It is something, but tonight we have a guest, a very noticeable, distinguishable guest. The man has over 100 acting credits. He is an actor, director. And he's one of only a couple of men that have appeared behind two very famous masks, but we leave him to, de to describe that. Uh, this is Mr. Douglas Tate. How are you, sir? Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? I'm good. <laughs> Thank thanks for taking the time out of your day to come out, uh, to come on. I know it's sort of late afternoon for yourself there. It's, uh, it's good. I'm glad to join you here, my Irish brothers. <laughs> yes. Uh um as, as we, we do appreciate you taking the time out of your, your busy day i know you've you're, you're getting busy um coming on but we do have one more part for your your famous intro that you get you're also yeah. an upcoming guest at the for the love of horror this year in manchester yes i'm so excited about that i've heard so much about the show can't wait to meet all the uk and irish and everybody in uh europe that's a horror fan that's going to the show i'm so excited it's air, it's air force con as well so yes <laughs> yeah, we'll be we'll be there somewhere along the way <laughs> that's great that's great um but doug let's uh let's jump straight into it because yeah. you're a man of a zillion films as i said but uh how did you get into acting well, I, um, I started acting, I, I went to Universal Studios in Hollywood because I live in, I grew up in LA and I was 12 years old and I saw Frankenstein performing. He was making people oh. laugh and he was scaring people at the same time. And I said, when I turn 16, I'm going to get a job doing that. And, it, and right when I turned 16, I applied, got the job as Frankenstein started playing a bunch of characters there i played frankenstein i played the wolfman phantom of the opera played harry from harry and the henderson so i did all the classic yes. monsters yes exactly um and just performed in shows there um and then from that i got an agent and you know kind of started auditioning but that was my start just for years i uh, in high school and after i was you know doing shows and entertaining guests from around the world that is awesome i mean yeah. like even some of the characters you've named there obviously frankenstein the wolfman two of the most infamous oh, yeah. horror characters probably ever to dawn the screen yeah they're the they started it i mean the universal uh classic monsters started horror actually you know they were like the first real scary horror movies of the time those monsters right. Oh, it was cool were, to be part of that, you know, in the park. Cause I loved Halloween myself. So I just felt like it was part of me. You know, I'd already dressed as Frankenstein when I was a kid many times and then get to do it in the park. It was, it was a blast. 
I mean, that's that's awesome. I know, obviously, I've seen um, people on Instagram and stuff that put up, you know, where they're like scare theater actors for the, the likes yeah. of the interactive shows and stuff. Yeah. But when I got to actually go to Florida, seeing people doing it live was just ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I mean, and then I did the Halloween Horror Nights, which, which is our haunted house during the October season. Yeah. So I did class. also. <laughs> And I was such a fan of all that. So to get to perform and it was a, a really cool training ground for the stuff I started to do after, you know. I mean, I suppose if you're doing live acting, it, it certainly makes it easier for for acting on screen, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, if you're if you're uh, making people laugh or scared crowds day after day, once you get on camera, it's a little different. Camera's a little more, you know, intimate, so you don't go as big. But it definitely helps, you know, to perform live. That's why theater is so such a good training, also, for acting. Um, you know, because it's hard. It's hard to get roles at first. I didn't get roles right away. It takes time, so you got to have something else where you're training and and doing it um, to get to get that opportunity. Just, just on an off chance, just as we mentioned, Halloween Horror Nights Universe. So what do you make of the lineup for this year's one? Oh, you know, I haven't even seen it, but it's always good. Like it's always. Yeah, yeah you really don't know what it is, you know? No, I don't. I haven't seen. No. It's, it's uh, Evil Dead Rise. Oh wow! Wow. I was That's like, cool. I was like, I'm so jealous. Dude, they always do it right. They do a great job. Yeah, it's always good. Um, but obviously that was just a little off topic I just wanted to see what you thought of that but um, obviously you mentioned there it, it's tough to get roles at the start obviously once you build a name it becomes a bit easier who you yeah. know that helps you along the way so yeah. having that little background of doing still acting all the time like generally you hear some people working in shops or pubs yeah. or anything where you're still acting it's obviously honing your craft yeah. to become uh, better yeah yeah, it was definitely something good. And I was taking acting class and I was a basketball player. So I did basketball commercials and I did everything I could to try to earn money and still perform. Because like you said, like I could have got a job working at a Starbucks or a pub or whatever, but I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to act, you know, so because you have to make money. And when you're starting out, you're not making money. So, you, you, you know, you have to do that to pay the bills. And uh, I did that for 10 years. I worked at Universal until I got Freddy vs. Jason. And then that's when I left Universal. <laughs> what, what was that? That was 02? 2002. Yeah. Yeah. I think it came out 03, did it? Yeah. So it, it came out 03 for us anyway. Three in uh, August, August this month, August I think 14th or 15th is the dude. In a couple days, in a couple days is the Freddy vs. Jason 20 year reunion of coming out. In a Genius. couple days, yeah. Now, when you uh, obviously we were talking off screen, um, when you mention horror and you're talking about characters, there's yeah. two of the biggest names probably ever, yes, um, yes. in terms of. Not even just slashers in 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 terms of horror. Freddy Krueger. Be... Yes. Well, Freddy Krueger, Jason, you know, and then Michael Myers are obviously, in my opinion, the biggest horror icons. I, I'd put I'd put Dracula in there as well. Well, yeah, that's true. If you want to go classic monster, uh, for sure, Dracula's in there, and even Frankenstein's, you know in there also. I think, I think in, term, in terms of the icons though, they're the three that are always kind of mentioned. Yeah. Well, I think so, those, that's because those are three that are like, they're very, like they're, they're very specific, you know, like Dracula. Yeah. You know, he's Dracula, but yeah, we've had yeah. different that's versions. Just, that's just a vampire. Do you know what I mean? Like there could be hundreds of vampires. There's not going to be hundreds of Freddy Krueger's. There's not going to be hundreds of Jason Voorhees, not hundreds of Michael Myers. I know different actors have played them, but the character is still just that one guy. Whereas yes. Dracula is a vampire, same as like any werewolf is just a werewolf. Um, right. It just, right. you know, so anyone could be there. Frankenstein's monsters and like him and Frankenstein himself are probably the two, like the two that are a little bit different yeah. in the sense that they, yeah. they also are very much set in stone. That's who they are. True. Yeah, there's been different versions of Wolfman, different versions of 
of Dracula and different movies. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, just just on that then, I'm gonna throw I'll throw a quick fire one out at you. Who's your favorite Dracula? My favorite Dracula, I gotta go I gotta go old school and say Bella Lugosi. You know. He was uh, I mean he started it, so you know, he was amazing. Why I mean that yours. <laughs> Gary Oldman was mine. Oh yeah. The movie yeah. the movie is absolutely tripe. That what movie that? holds up. It's he was amazing in that. Gary Oldman's incredible. That makeup in that yeah. movie was insane too. Yeah, I, I think the movie is terrible itself. Um yeah. Keanu no, Reeves like is probably, it's probably not really no. Uh well, like I watch it, but I mean Gary Oldman steals the show. Keanu Reeves wasn't great in it. Um the movie had its problems. Yeah. But he just he was ridiculous. Gary Oldman is good in anything he does. He's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um sorry, I, I might do that. I divulge from time to time and I'll throw out some quick fire questions. Yeah. Depends on the topic that comes up. But like going back to Freddy versus Jason, obviously where yeah. it's, you said it started for you, you're talking about the first real crossover. I know yeah. I know it happened. I know they said it in in Friday I don't know, what was it, seven I think Jason goes to hell. The hand yeah. comes up. Yeah. 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 Um and, I know they honestly, said it with that. It took ten years for that movie to get made. Like they were talking about it for ten years I found out. And then, you know, it finally happened. And if it would have happened right after that movie, I would have never had the opportunity because I was in school. So I'm glad it took that much time. <laughs> um but um, I mean it, yeah. it just it just seemed like that movie went through production hell from all the reports like it was set to go it wasn't set to go it went it didn't go yeah yeah it changed hands direct different directors were involved uh kane hodder was uh you know kane hodder he played he was, jason he was, yeah, he was penciled in to do it wasn't he before he kane was supposed got to it. do it because I've talked to him about it. The casting director offered him the role because he, he had already done the last four. So uh, when once Ronnie Yu was hired and it was going, Ronnie Yu didn't want him. So Yeah, he brought Ken Kersinger in. Yeah. So yeah. actually, originally, I auditioned for it, and they were interested in me playing the whole role. So I auditioned several oh, times. Sure. Yeah, I auditioned several times. And then they called my agent and said, is he available these dates for, for the movie? We're going to put him on like a hold. And I was like, oh my God, man, this is, I'm going to play Jason. Yes. And then I'm like, in. <laughs> I know. And then like a month went by and I didn't hear anything and my agent called and they're like, oh yeah, so sorry. They went with somebody else. And then fast forward 10 years later, when we did the Freddy vs. Jason reunion, I talked to Ken Kersinger at a convention and Ken told me that he didn't audition for it, that he was going in to meet Ronnie to be the stunt coordinator, because he was a stunt coordinator. And Ronnie, you and him hit it off and said, man, you're the right size. Why don't you just play him? And Ken was like, yeah, okay. You're not, so, you're not gonna turn it down. <laughs> yeah, of course. So that's how he got it. And then what happened was, um, is Ken, they were going to do a reshoot because they didn't the the audience when they did the test testing for it the original ending nobody liked it it was jason ritter the hero of the movie grows claws in bed with monica keenan people didn't understand it it's on the deleted scenes they're like is he freddy Krueger?" <laughs> they didn't like the ending so they decided to change the ending and they did the reshoot in la and they couldn't get ken's visa in time because they shot the movie in canada his he's canadian and i'm from la so i was the second choice to play him because they were already considering me from the start so they brought me in and i i played him so that's how I, was, that I was wondering so i had heard that you only done a portion of it and i know i know it's the ending portion yes um, and I was wondering, I was like, how do you go from having one actor to another? Now, I do, in a way, feel sorry for uh, Ken, obviously, got, that he got the role, but in the in the terms of the heat that came with it, 
Um, yeah. Obviously, everybody wanted Kane because there was going to be Kane and Robert going toe to toe, and everyone wanted it. Yeah, yeah. Um, like it was unfortunate for him uh, to not get it, and I would like to think that I don't, like I don't think it could have made the movie any better or worse than thing, but I think it was everybody was awaiting uh, Robert yeah. and and Kane. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how it was supposed to go down, and. They kind of screwed over uh, Kane, but uh, Ronnie Yu wanted somebody taller because Kane and Robert are similar in height. So they wanted to see that height difference when they were fighting and stuff. And me and Ken are six foot five. So we were, we had the height, but it was wrong that they, uh, that they offered it to Kane. But at the same time, Ken had nothing to do with any of that. And he's a really nice guy. So he got a lot of flack. It would, I don't think it. I don't think it really would have mattered if it was handed to to say even Gary Oldman, he would have caught flack because it was just what fans wanted. Yeah, it had I mean, it, it, it didn't him. matter that he did it bad or did it good. It was just no. happening just, that way. It was going to happen. The fact that Ken was already known, Ken had a. I mean, Kane was already known. He had a fan base that loved him as that character. So no matter who it was, could have been. If it was me in the whole movie, I would have gotten the flack. So. It's nothing personal towards Ken. You oh no! I, 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 go ahead, Ted. Sorry. No, I was gonna say you. You might have got lucky that you know in the end that you didn't get the whole film because you know yeah. you you wouldn't have been a, a well-known name at that stage. Like this was your first big break. Do you know what I mean? Like I know you'd been acting and doing smaller parts for years, yeah. but this was your first yeah. big Hollywood break. And if you'd taken that and taken the whole role, like the backlash on you could have been so big that a yeah. lot of um, other directors might have gone, oh, we don't know if we want to go near this guy. Like, he has a lot of heat from his first I don't, film. I don't, know if, I don't know if it would have been that. It would have been more um, that it would have probably hurt my... Uh, it would have hurt me emotionally because I was just, I was early 20s. So, like, yeah. when you get something and then all these people are hating on you, I know that would have affected me bad at that time, especially. I mean, you know? like for horror fans the movie itself holds a place for everybody um obviously as it says off screen and whatnot it was the first real crossover um obviously we ended up going on to get a uh, that terrible tripe of alien yeah, versus yeah. predator but yeah um this one was a bit different obviously they went Monica Keenan, uh, they brought in Kelly Rowland. Obviously, she was big on the music scene as well. Yeah, she was. Um, it wasn't as if they they kind of skimped out on names and went, let's just get a whole lot of nobodies here. Yeah. Yeah. You know and I mean? also, also, that was the last time you ever saw Freddy Krueger play the character, Robert England. That's the last yeah. time. He, he told me on set, he's like, this is it. I'm done after this. I'm, I can't do this anymore. I mean, so, like, uh, uh, what? Now that was two. It was twenty years ago, so he was what? He would have been fifty-seven. Yeah, at that he was stage. like almost, almost sixty, and it took it takes a lot. So, like, you know. Yeah, let's get that makeup on. You know, like a mask is one thing. You pop a mask on, that's it, kind of done. Like sitting there for what three, four hours in makeup, getting this yeah. stuff put on, and it's heavy. It's you know, and you have to wear it the whole day. You can't whole just. Day. I can't just and take it off doing, when it gets a bit hot no, or anything. Oh, it's rough, no. I'd say. And then all the action he's doing, a lot of action. You know, it's not easy at all. I think, I think, as we said about the the horror icons, Freddy for me, and I've always said it, is the one that changed everything because he was a character. It wasn't just, it wasn't just a guy in a mask walking people down. Now, no offense to anybody that that played Jason or played Michael or things. <laughs> But when you've got a script and you've got timing to do and you've got all this creativity and, and humor to bring in, it's going to take a lot more. Like, Freddy was more of a, a rough and tumble, yeah, funny well, kind of slasher. Well, that's why you can replace somebody like me in a mask, but you can't replace Robert England because he built the character. He speaks. I, I yeah. mean, we... We, we, we had a, an attempt at that in 2010 and yeah. the least said about it, the better. And you know what? That guy's a great actor too. He that is, guy's yeah. A great I, actor, you know. I, I, I do like um, Jackie Earl Haley, to be honest. Um, and I thought I thought at the time, I was like, oh, this could be, this could be a good cast in here. 
Um, but the, again, no offense to anybody in that movie, but that went through production hell and was just hell in general. Yeah. I think I think I think nearly anything that has such a you know a loved following for a very specific character is going to be tough. Like, and it doesn't matter how good the actor is because, like, even if you take um, like you know Aladdin, obviously Robin Williams did the genie, and like they got Will Smith, and Will Smith is a great actor in his own right, um, and like he's beloved world, he was beloved worldwide at the time. He took the role, and people were just like, oh, it's not good enough. It's not Robin Williams, and it didn't matter. Like, it wouldn't have mattered who you who you put in. Because it wasn't Robin Williams, it was never going to hold up. And that, it's the same for yeah. Robert England. Like, no one was going to be able to hold up. Now, maybe, you know, in 10 years, if they're like, we've been doing it at Freddy, and somebody takes the role then, and Robert England, is, you know, Robert England will be in his 80s then. 80s. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's like, listen, I can't do it. Then the other person might get a bit of... Uh, a bit of flat like a bit of freedom to like you know i'm not taking this role from him like he can't do it anymore. yeah so yeah I'm, yeah that's different. i'm taking it and maybe it could be maybe it could be done then but i think i think you're right at the moment i think just anyone who yeah. tries to do it is just going to they're going to be met with a horrible backlash and it's yeah you know, especially yeah. as you said if they're young and like with social media these days everyone's so accessible like 30 yeah, that's, years that's, ago you do something everyone hates yeah. you like you might see one or two comments written somewhere and that's it yeah like in a newspaper yeah. just don't read the newspaper and you're done like no i know it was all in a newspaper if it was backlash now it's like anybody can go on and say oh you suck you, you're terrible yeah but the bet the best thing for yourself there obviously you can say in my first real movie i got to play jason alongside what uh, our previous guest uh, Gary Smart, myself, even the King um, has gone on to say is, is uh, in fact true. Robert England, you start alongside Robert England, who was considered the last great horror icon. Well, I, this is what I exactly. This is what I get to say. I am the last person to act with Robert England in the Freddy Krueger makeup. Because yes, I it, was. What a claim. Uh, what, what a claim to have for the rest of your life, do you know what I mean? I, I was just at a show, I have the shirt on, Mad Monster in Arizona, great convention. Robert England was there. His He was sold out the first hour. After that, they had to cut the line off. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Like, if he if he came over here, they'd have to, oh, they'd oh. have to extend the, like, they'd have to make the convention a week because oh, they would. everyone would demand that they wanted to yeah. get a photo with him get a signature oh, from yeah. him there's no way and i'm not just talking that the the people going to the show would want that every single guest would be like i'm get you're gonna have to close my stall because i'm getting a picture with him oh yeah it's it's just the way it is because he's such a legend that it's like he will sell out no matter where he goes and i, he'll be I will fight anybody <laughs> <laughs> exactly how was um, that for you actually like you know you went in you did you did this role um and you're obviously still quite a young guy and you you were a big yeah. horror guy were yeah. you a bit starstruck going in oh i was so starstruck i was more starstruck that i was working with him than i was yeah than i was playing jason just because for me that was like halloween was the first horror movie i saw nightmare on elm street was the second horror movie i saw so you know, I grew up with this guy. Like this guy's a legend, and here I am on set with him. I mean, it was, it was crazy. It was so cool, and he was so cool. And he's talking about how it took so long, and that he loves the crossover, and he loves the, the like rock music of of um, Friday the Thirteenth, and it's got a different vibe than Freddy's. So they're putting it. To, I mean, he was telling me all this stuff. It was so cool. Now. I, I'm gonna ask you a question. I don't know whether you'll know the the actual truthful answer to this, right? So no. allegedly, there was an alternate ending, another alternate ending. Oh, really? That was gonna run for uh, Freddy vs. Jason, where instead of having, you know, I, I'm only going. This is what the reports that I've read. That instead of you walking out holding Freddy's head, spoiler alert: the movie's 20 years old, so fuck it. Um. <laughs> Where you walk out of the water, instead, you the two of you get pulled down to hell. And Dude, I never heard that before. I mean, it's a possibility, but that they never, we never talked about that. 
That could have been then, one of their ideas. It could have definitely been one of their ideas, you know? And then what would have happened was you were supposed to be arguing or fighting down there and then you were separated by a lot of chains. Wow. And uh, apparently the hell priest, obviously, Pinhead, comes out. I don't think probably would, I no. think that's I, I think I think that's a lot of like fans wanting something like I that to bring so. another one in, but I think I the think more so. like you know, I know Marvel managed to do it with a huge crossover of all these things, but I I think in in horror I think it's very difficult to make too big a crossover because everyone's got their um you know, yeah. this is my character like yes. my creation and I don't want my one being the one to lose out and things like that so i think the more you brought in the more convoluted it would get like and i don't think you know, yeah. i always i always hoped it was real i didn't i couldn't guarantee that it was I mean, it, 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 like for something like that i i would have heard something about it i i don't think that that was real the one thing that i was hearing talk about after was that they wanted to do a crossover with ash too freddie versus jason versus ash but i think yeah. it was hawk I don't think that it was ever anything that was serious, but I never heard anything about the pinhead thing. Yeah, the Ash one, I don't really see how that would work because obviously Ash is completely human. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean it's, it was something they were talking about after the film. They were also talking about doing another one, doing part two, but I know that Robert England said he was done, so that's probably why that didn't happen, you know? Oh, that makes sense. Well, that's probably enough on on uh, Freddy versus Jason. Yeah, well, um, just before we before we move off, Freddy, I I've told Greg this before, right? All these films are starting to get reboots and stuff, and I've yeah. told Greg the only way that Freddy or that um, that Freddy should get rebooted is in a VR world. It's time it's time to catch up to the times. Put him in VR. A load of kids stick on a VR headset, and Freddy starts murdering them. Like starts oh, murking man. them all out. If if they're ever gonna do another Freddy film, that is that is a hundred percent the way to go. Now, unfortunately, wow. you're not gonna get Robert Englund doing it, but yeah. if you do it in a VR world, you can make Freddy a VR character, and you can get Robert to do the voice. That's true. Wow. That's, Genius. That, that's the way Genius. to go. I'm telling you. So someone in Hollywood needs to pick this up. <laughs> Fine, executive producer, that lad. Um, obviously, I said in the intro that you got you got to play um, the man behind two of the most famous masks. Um, how did how did you go about picking up the the Shatner mask? Well, I don't know if you guys know this, but I give you a little trivia: is I was supposed to play him in a movie in 2015 called Halloween Returns. There was a there was a Halloween movie. Called Halloween Returns, where Michael Myers is on death row, and he busts out of death row, kills a bunch of people, and now he's mm. on the. That movie, I went in, I met everybody. Sean Clark, who's going to be in uh, in Manchester, is my agent, and he's part of this whole Halloween franchise. I'm doing H45 in Pasadena, um, the end of September, which is a huge Halloween show. And uh, actually, Neil, who runs for the love of horror, is heading over to that. And he told me that. He told me that. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so anyways, I know. <laughs> Sean brought me in, met Malik Akkad, whose dad was Mustafa, who started this whole thing. Now he runs it, Ryan Freeman, producer. And then the director was the director of, have you ever seen The Collector and The Collection? I love The Collector and The Collection. Yeah. Yeah. So it was Marcus Dunstan the writer director of collector and collection was going to direct this and he wrote it with another guy went in they loved it love what i did because i'm a huge halloween fan said you got this you got the role you're our guy dimension films you heard of dimension films yeah 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 Dimension films harvey weinstein's company that's who they were dealing with and then everything blew up. Everything, Touchy subject. This was before everything blew up, but he was already a terrible guy and was hard to work with. And for whatever reason, I don't know all the details about it, but they couldn't handle it with the guy. They didn't like him. They didn't like dealing with him. So they shelved the project 
it got thrown out and was never shot. And I just, I, I literally, this is what probably out of my career a lot, you know, you have a lot of, a lot of things happen in your career that hit you and you're just like, oh man, daily this one, this one like hit me like a ton of bricks. I was just like, oh my God, I was going to play this character in a movie. Now it's never going to happen. So fast forward years later, I'm, I'm in Bulgaria shooting Hellboy. Sean calls me and is, is like, I was in the last Hellboy movie. Uh, it's a uh, fr friend of the show, Neil, Neil Marshall. Neil oh, Marshall, yep. Oh, yes, Neil Marshall, who won't even talk about it because they totally screwed him over. They didn't let him direct the movie. It was a terrible experience what I saw them do to he's him. A, he's, a, he's a top, top bloke, Neil is. Uh, directed my favorite mo werewolf movie in Dark oh, yeah. Soldiers. Oh, my God. Amazing. Best Amazing movie director. ever made. Uh, the Descent. Great guy. One of, the best, one of the best horror movies ever made. Love, love Neil Marshall. Love his work. They totally screwed him on Hellboy. But anyways, that's beside the point. Uh, Sean Clark calls me and said, hey, they want to see you. Can you come in next week? I was like, dude, I'm in Bulgaria. This was for Halloween 2018. The first one. Uh, in Bulgaria, I'm shooting know. Hellboy. I'm shooting Hellboy. He's like, dude, you got to get yourself in, man. I mean, or else you don't have an opportunity. I said, I can't. They won't let me leave and I'm filming. I'm in Bulgaria. I'm like, you know, 15 hour flight away. And so anyways, not that I would have gotten it because James was perfect. He had the uh, right, wanted a guy in his, didn't and one a guy in his sixties, the director did, because it was 30 years later. Yeah. But I'd say that was were, still crushing though. Like this is your crushing. Second, like this is your crushing. second opportunity to take, to take on the Shatner mask. And twice now you've been and they are of circumstance. They already knew me over there. They knew me. They had already were, you know, were gonna hire me. So it was crushing, man. Because Hellboy, yeah. like I thought it was gonna be something different. What they did with Neil and everything, it just didn't turn out to be what I thought. So, anyways, so so that so there it goes again. I said that's it. Okay, so fast forward a couple years later or a year later, Chris Nelson makeup artist who did all the effects on Halloween. Amazing. My buddy puts Good my name. In. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just did the exorcist. Um, puts my name in to be the flashback Myers in Halloween kills. So I sent the audition tape. They loved it. Blah, blah, blah. They know me. Didn't get that. The stunt coordinator, oh, up, <laughs> the stunt coordinator ended up playing the character. But he said, hey, listen, I want to bring you in to double James because you know the movements and stuff. So I want to I want to get you in on this. So I was like, ah, oh. I mean, that wasn't what I wanted. I obviously wanted to play the character, but I was like, you know what? At least I can do something right. At least I'll be a part of this. Yeah, well, I mean, so, you've had you've had two chances already, and you weren't able to take them. You're not going to turn down the third. No, even if they were, even if they were like, listen, you're just in one scene, and all you're doing yeah. is walking from here to there. You're not turning it down. It. You taking know, it. you're taking yeah. that no matter what. Exactly. So I was like, I'm in. I'm in. So that's how it all happened. I came in, double James. James was amazing. He's a great. I mean, he did a great job as Myers. I thought he was so good. He was. Fantastic. Uh, so I watched him because his movements are different than like I was basing my movements off like Nick Castle and Dick Warlock. And once I saw him and saw how he did, he's he's more aggressive, you know. But but uh, but amazing. That's how so, I thought Myers should have been. Yeah, yeah. He took it to a whole nother level. I think. I think his portrayal was amazing. But uh, anyways, that's how it all went down. When I first put on those coveralls, I have a video on my YouTube showing it. I was beyond, like, I literally was getting the chills the whole time. It brought me back to childhood when I first saw Halloween 2. It was the first one I saw. And, uh, you know, it was like surreal. It was surreal. So so now I've uh, I've been behind the two uh, awesome masks, the 
Jason and Myers. And I'm going to bring, I'm, I have a bunch I'm bringing up custom made masks to sign and sell. Up to oh, nice. A lot of horror. Yeah. Nice. And it, I'm, uh, I'm you get to keep, <laughs> you get to keep your, uh, your mask from the no, process. No, I didn't get to keep it, but <laughs> the craziest thing. I go do a con in Germany. Dude, I did a con in Germany. And this guy in Germany owns my mask, my machete, my outfit. Oh, this guy man. owns like so much Friday the 13th stuff. And he brought it. And I got to see it again. You know, that's it was pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. You should have you should have commandeered it. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Uh I do have like I'm doing a costume Jason photo op and I have the mask made off the mold from Freddy vs. Jason. I have the head, Freddy's head made off the mold that I have in the photo op carrying the severed head. So I have like a legit costume, you know, which is awesome. cool. Yeah. Looking forward to that now, I will say. Um, but obviously, I'm going to ask you the question. Obviously, I know you were involved in it, but what did you think of the new trilogy? I thought it was amazing. I thought uh, David Gordon Green is a huge fan of Halloween. Uh, you could tell. Yeah. He brought, like, he understood. He understood as a fan. He brought back the actors from the original. A lot of people ignore that because they're not fans. He brought back a lot of the people, the sheriff, you know, a lot of Will the Patton. original. Legend. Yes. Yes. He brought back um, Kyle Richards, the girl. Halloween one, you know, that's just, I had a scene with her. Um, so he really understood it. And I like, like you said, that he, he ignored the middle of all those ones. And then yeah, just wreck, retconned it all right. out and just, yeah. yes. let's, let's just pretend these 30 years, nothing happened. He's just been in prison and let's yeah. just go from there. I, I, I actually so love, I actually love the fact that he knew if he remade it, it would get some amount of abuse. So he just goes, you know what? Hold on a minute. I'm not going to remake it. I'm just going to go at it in a different angle. I thought that was and great. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, very, very smart idea. And Danny McBride, when I first heard that, because he, he had wrote it too. I was, I was like, very what? surprised with that. Yeah. It was so surprising, but he was, he yeah. was a huge fan too. He's a huge fan. So He's a fantastic writer as well. To be fair, yeah. To oh no, he is. You just you don't. When you hear Danny McBride, you don't initially think, "Oh, he's going to be writing," you know, no. Halloween. <laughs> you know, no, and, and I, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Land of the Lost. Have you seen Land of the Lost? Um, yeah, I did. With Will, Will Ferrell and Danny McBride. Well, I was like the main slee stack in that, so I got to hang out with Danny McBride for two months. That guy's awesome. He was so yeah. cool. Do you know, I, I put that on one day. I actually thought I was putting on, you know, the Brendan Fraser movie, in, Journey into the Center of the Earth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I was watching it. Will Ferrell's going along, going along. And I was like, I was like, how are they Bill and Brendan Fraser is the main guy in this? And uh, I haven't seen him. It's been on for like 45 minutes. <laughs> I could tell you didn't like it. <laughs> um, it's I do. I love Will Ferrell and I love Danny McBride. I just don't think they work well together for me okay um i just think the the are two different kind of comedies yeah yeah but, i also think if you're I mean, th if you're going into something watching it thinking you're gonna watch brendan fraser else. yeah and then yeah. will farrell's strolling around you're like hmm this film you're isn't like, what i was expecting so like maybe <laughs> yeah. maybe that's a maybe that's always a muddled your view on it greg Maybe I, I, I haven't I haven't watched it since, but I, yeah, I should I, go back and rewatch it. I, I think you should give another rewatch. I think it's better than you're giving it credit for, and I think it is because you were expecting something else when you sat down to watch it because you watched the wrong film. Yeah, I mean it's got some real funny funny moments in it. Uh, Danny McBride actually kicks me in the balls in it. Uh, <laughs> That's oh. not funny. <laughs> I just everyone really else. Still. Funny for everyone else, just not the person getting kicked in the balls. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. But like obviously you've had it quite a, an established decorated career. Obviously I said over a hundred and a hundred acting credits. Mm -hmm. Um you've also got to work with probably one of the most influential horror directors in in the last twenty five years in James Wan. Obviously oh, Annabelle. Dude. Or oh, Annabelle man. was it? Annabelle comes home. Yeah. 
That it might guy. actually be it might be the only one that I actually like out of the Annabelle franchise. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't a fan of them. <laughs> James Wan is a genius. That guy is I mean he's he's incredible. I like all his stuff. I just think he he understands horror, he understands how to build tension and scare. He was really great to just see on set. He's really amazing. I mean the movie itself, obviously building off the back of his franchise in The Conjuring. Yep. Um, I thought the build in The Conjuring where they opened it up with Annabelle was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then obviously spawn, and you knew it was going to spawn a movie. And then yeah. to spawn three more movies. So smart. Three more, yeah. Uh, I still prefer them than The Nun. But um, you play the werewolf in Annabelle Comes Home. Yeah, yeah. It was such a random, I, random thing to come up, wasn't it? I was like, "What the fuck is going on here?" No, yeah, they um, there was talk about spinning the werewolf off. There was some talk about it. it just never happened. That would have been cool to have my own character. Hey, more but, werewolf films is going to be good for us. We we're big, big yeah. werewolf guys here. That's great. Yeah, yeah. no, but. Uh, I um that's another cool one to be a part of that franchise. I did a convention a couple months ago with all the Conjuring women like Bonnie Aaron's the nun and a bunch of people from Annabelle. So that's another great uh franchise to be a part of for sure. Those guys are awesome. They're such a good team. Like as I said to you, he's probably one of the most influential directors probably of the last twenty five or more years. Um, so like he he spawned the Conjuring franchise, obviously Annabelle, the Nun, oh, yeah. um, and I think there was two or three other characters that were due to to get movies. The Crooked Man from yes. Conjuring Two, um, and I had read other ones as well. But like demon I, thing. the Witch. Uh, there was a demon. I think they were talking about Valak. Uh, uh is it Valak? Was that the Valak? Nun? Yeah, but Valak is the demon from Conjuring. Oh, yeah, 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 that was the one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the one, but uh, yeah, well, it turned, I think they turned it into the nun. Yes, they did. Yeah. Um, and like, uh, again, they were just okay movies. Those kind of movies I'm not really big into, but I was re I really got behind the Conjuring franchise. I thought it was amazing. The Conjuring was yeah. incredible. Yeah, the first one was brilliant. The second one holds a bit of a, a special place for me because uh, I have family that live in London. And when I was younger, you they brought me to the Enfield house. Oh, wow. wow. Now, That's someone crazy. lives in it or whatnot now, so you, you don't what? actually have to go in. But, like, yeah, you can go outside it. And I was like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Wow. But, um, like, have you any upcoming projects you'd like to, uh, to mention? Well... For the Friday the 13th fans, um, there's this really amazing director that is a fan of Friday the 13th, and he got so tired of, he's a filmmaker, and he got tired of not seeing a Friday the 13th because they're in like this legal battle. So he did this film you could find on YouTube called Never Hike Alone, and it's really Pretty, good. It's awesome. So, so now he did Never Hike Alone 2 coming out this October, and I'm in that. So... I play Ooh. a character in that. Yes. And it's it's a lot better than the first one. He ramped it up. And he brought back I mean, Tom Matthews, Tommy Jarvis from, you know, uh, the original. He brought back Vinny Guastafari, who plays the sheriff in original Friday the 13th films. So he brought back some of the cast, like them and me. So it's, it's really good. That's Very awesome. Good. I yeah. um, I remember seeing the, the Never Hike Alone I think it was on YouTube. I think I seen it. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah. This someone someone sent it to me as a fan made. Yeah. So this one's gonna be on YouTube too. He first is gonna like give DVDs and Blu-rays out to the people who um contributed. Who Indiegogo. Yeah, exactly. And uh, some guy from the UK actually. Uh, I <laughs> I have his name. He paid for me to um you use his name in the film. So I'm playing this some one of the contributors, but. So that's happening in October, and also my film's coming out in October, and should should come out, hopefully, to Ireland and the UK. Um, and that's called Angel Baby. I directed it. 
and that's a thriller. Oh. Yeah. What, what yeah. Do I, any more details that you can give out about I it? Or? I can't really give too much out because it hasn't really, it hasn't been announced, but um, we just been- Oh, no, don't, 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 yeah, don't, don't say it that you might get you in trouble even though it's your own yeah, movie. Yeah, but it's a thriller, it's a thriller. And um, people, if they follow me on my Instagram, actor Douglas Tate, my social media, I'll announce it when I can. But it's coming out Absolutely. this year, which is exciting. Absolutely, and we'll, we'll make sure to share it around free and everything as well. That'd be great. Um, and if, as soon as I get the chance, I'll check it out and I'll let you know what we think. Absolutely, please. Um, absolutely. And I'm, to be fair, I'm fairly blunt, as I told you off screen, about other issues yeah. that we've had with, with, with films. Um, yeah. I'm fairly well, dude, blunt. You're not going to have any stuff. sound issues or <laughs> day and night in the same scene. I promise to do that. <laughs> uh, I, I fully believe it. I'd fully believe it. Um, but... Yeah, like I, as I says, I'm fairly blunt when when it comes to it. If I don't like something, I'll tell you straight. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I can see. <laughs> um, as we said, they only touched on three or four of your movies there. Um, yeah. obviously, there's 110 of them. Uh, we can't go through them all, <laughs> but certainly yeah. if you have uh, if you have the time, maybe we'd love to have you back on again. For sure. Yeah, uh, definitely. Let's do it. Um, Maybe not before we meet up in November, but go after. Yeah, that, maybe maybe we do it when my movie comes out. So yeah, I could definitely. Talk about Absolutely. It. Yeah. Oh, that would be a good one. here's the here's the kicker. If you're free, we'll do it in London, live. Oh, it'd be cool to do that, but I don't know if he'll be all that free when he's over there now. Yeah, if I, I, just, I just I just threw that out. I just threw that out there. It'd be cool, okay. but I don't, I don't know how free you're going to be. I think maybe, there's going to be a lot of maybe, people waiting for signings and photographs. Maybe at a pub in Ireland. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Um, but, Doug, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Um, Thank you, bud. And we, do we do appreciate you taking the time out of your afternoon to come on and record this with us. It's been um, a blast. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And as I says, welcome back absolutely anytime. Uh, even if you wanted to come back and just chat shit about movies that are coming out um but yeah the usual happens now ted you're gonna give Dropped him his them, question some... i'm gonna give him the question well actually i can't we check the question but i will give him the question but uh <laughs> i'm gonna ask you because you haven't been on since we've done it uh ted freddy or sorry not freddy uh michael or jason uh, i'm michael all the way yeah i'm a, i'm a big Halloween guy, especially after the you know, the last three yeah. um, that solidified it for me because that trilogy and the original so your, like, your four films are just an absolute top like top drawer pinnacle of storytelling uh, from like, and you get a big gap of 30 years as well um, whereas uh, Jason the films are a little bit more disjointed they don't they don't flow the same way for me so yeah my, it's always been michael for me doug same question I, i'm definitely a my always been a michael fan over at jason i agree that they even though in the middle of halloween they kind of went different places there's still more of a similar theme and environment as opposed to jason went to space went to manhattan you know they didn't stick to be to fair them. jason jason has probably one of the best kill scenes ever when he's in jason x and he puts your one's head into the liquid nitrogen <laughs> now, like don't get me wrong i enjoy like you know that he goes to space and stuff like that i think it's cool you know to go that left field and stuff but for me a conti like continuing stories are always better um a big thing like as i as i've said from like very early on i hung my hat on scream as my favorite uh, franchise from I think maybe Scream 2 I was like that's it that's the one for me um, and I think it's held up quite solidly like it there's always a continuing storyline you get you know recurring characters um, and yeah the killer is different every film but always yeah. brilliant like every film has been really good Um, yeah so I've got one more then just to ask you American Werewolf in London or Dog Soldiers? Dog Soldiers. Yeah. My man. 
I'm a huge Neil fan and I got to hang out with him. He's awesome. I was a fan of his film. So I just, yeah. man, I wish they didn't do him like they did on Hellboy. Yeah, we. I, I didn't even bring it up in the episode with him because I just didn't want to piss him off or... Did you know that? Did you know he wasn't happy with it? Uh, I'd heard grumblings. I'd heard grumblings. Well, so I saw I just... it. I saw it. I saw it firsthand. So I saw what they did to him. Yeah. And it was BS. They fired his DP on the first day of shooting that he's done all his movies with. You don't. You don't start off the shoot like that. No. Yeah. I just. The less I mean, there was, the better, there was I think. no need to bring it up to him when he's got you know all those other films behind him that you can talk about that you know were exactly. b better films overall and that he's going to have a better experience with you know well I mean, he won't I, even talk I, about it i don't think if you brought it up he wouldn't talk about I it think, yeah i think he probably shut down like that's that's what that's i yeah. kind of got from the grumblings yeah. of like it, people weren't happy with it no. i mean like we we were basing it off the reaping re or off the reaping off the lair um was the new one out when we done it with him in february oh which was absolutely fucking awesome dude he's so good he's, so good he's so good yeah it's just so awesome i'd actually like to see him go back and do a proper horror like he done when he done the descent where it's oh you know, yeah like, dog soldiers has a bit of humor the lair has some humor uh the the raven has bits and pieces of it but i'd love to see him go back and do a fucking dark horror again Oh, he, he knows how to do it, and I bet you he will one of these days. He's... Uh, I made a, I made a bold claim a couple of weeks ago that he was probably the best British horror director ever. Don't know if that's too bold uh, of a claim to make, to be honest. That's, uh, uh, I'm thinking right now as you say that, and I can't come up with somebody that I can say is better. I think, I think a, I think a, a lot of a lot of fans will come out with some of the hammer horror and stuff. No, I, I, I think the know. hammer horrors are great for what they are, but I think for what they are and for the time. But if you compare it to a Neil Marshall Descent or Dog Soldiers, no way. Yeah, that's it. I made the bold claim. It's out there. <laughs> All right. All right. Anybody want to challenge it? Not not a, not here anyway. You can, uh, here. You can email not you can here. email it into the show and I'll read it and then I'll delete it and that'll be that. That'll be that. <laughs> I'll yeah. tell you I'll tell you your opinion is wrong and then I'll yeah. delete it. <laughs> I'm delete it. But uh, what we'll do is, folks, um, you can find Doug's uh, social media handles uh, below in the description and whatnot, and we'll certainly share them out as well. Keep an eye out for uh, the big release of his upcoming movie as well in. The later months of the year around fall time you know when it's getting spooky and scary and all that yep and uh you never know you might see a live you might not you'll definitely see doug again though and uh we'll finish this the way we finish absolutely every friday night ladies and gentlemen in the words of the great george a romero stay scared yes <laughs>